Good morning. Happy Sunday. The gentleman, I'm assuming gentleman, I apologize if I've misgendered you, who asked the original question about 14-230 applying to judges has asked another question that I think is in good faith and is a reasonable question to ask. Uh, basically, can you uh, only charge half of a statute? And the answer to that is, generally speaking, no. If a statute has subsections, maybe a person could be charged under one of the subsections of a statute, maybe. Um, I don't, not in this case, though. And I, I haven't seen anything in, um, anything in the, these codes that allows that to happen. So, so I think you have to, I think the whole, the whole actual statute, as far as North Carolina is concerned, applies or doesn't apply and there's authority for that there is a uh, here we go uh, penal statutes are construed strictly against the state and liberally in favor of the private citizen with all conflicts and inconsistencies resolved in his favor this is a north carolina supreme court case it is from 1968 but it hasn't changed and so if you are construing this statute strictly and resolving any favors and fa any uh, conflicts in favor of the defendant, which would be a judge, since you want to apply it to a judge, then it doesn't work. So that's that's the failure right there. But let's let's look at it and see why it wouldn't make sense to only do the first sentence and pretend that the second sentence is something completely separate. Number one, it's not it's not given its own subsection. That's, that's clue number one. Number two is it references the previous sentence. If it shall be proved that such officer, which means that the officer who was charged and uh, found guilty of willfully omitting, neglecting, or refusing to discharge any of the duties of his office. So if that officer, after his qualification, willfully and corruptly omitted neglected or refused to discharge any of the duties of his office or willfully and corruptly violated his oath of office according to the true intent and meaning thereof such officer i.e this officer up here shall be guilty of misbehavior in office and shall be punished by removal therefrom under under the sentence of the court under the sentence of the court which sentence of the court well that is a sentence right there class one misdemeanor is the sentence of the court as a part of the punishment for the offense, as a part of the punishment for the offense. So 14-230 violating 14-230 is the offense. Class one misdemeanor is the punishment and you can include removal from office as a part of the punishment for the offense. Now, I, I stopped on corruptly a couple times because it, people might be thinking, well, that, those words don't mean anything. I don't understand it. Well, as it happens in North Carolina, you have a case from 1977, which has defined them, and it is still good law. I did check. And it defines willfully as proceeding from a conscious motion of the will, blah, blah, blah. But it also defines corruption is and it defines corruption as or corruptly i should say as illegality a vicious and fraudulent intention to invade the prohibitions of the law the act of an official or fiduciary person who unlawfully and wrongfully uses his station or character to procure some benefit for himself or for another person contrary to a duty and the rights of others the word corruptly when used in a statute generally imports a wrongful design to acquire some pecuniary or other advantage. So if, if he takes a bribe as part of his, uh, as part of his willfully neglecting or omitting or refusing to discharge any of the duties, then that would be corruptly. Uh, if he demands sexual favors, if, if he demands that his wife gets a job at whatever, or his, his brother gets a contract or something along those lines. That, that, would make it, that would make it corruptly. So basically, it's less bad. Like if you, if you just don't do it because, you know, you don't want to and you're willfully neglecting the duties of your office, well, then you can be guilty of a class one misdemeanor. But if you do it for money, if you do it for advantage, then you can also be removed from office. And the problem is that once you start down the track, you'll notice that the, 
that the language is mandatory. Uh, such officer shall be guilty of misbehavior in office and shall be punished by removal. So if you prove that the uh, officer or the clerk of the court or the magistrate or the sheriff or in the hypothetical, because it doesn't work, if the judge is guilty of a of willfully and corruptly omitting to discharge the duties of his office, then he shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. Mis be guilty of misbehavior in office and shall be punished by removal therefrom. Shall is mandatory. May is permissive. Because it is mandatory, you can't get around it. It's referring to the person above. You can't get around it. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.